is about to host their first presidential debate. There will be eight candidates on stage tonight during Tucker Carlson and Fox, a feud there, as well as Donald Trump and the rest of the Republican Party. So here are the eight candidates that'll be on stage during the debate tonight. I'm going to go through the list of names one at a time. On your left, that is Nikki Haley, former governor of South Carolina and also a former member of the Trump cabinet. Right here is Asa Hutchinson. Asa Hutchinson, he's running. He is a governor. He's also been involved in politics in many different ways. So tough chance here to try to uh, move up in the polls. Probably not going to happen. Quite frankly, I should probably mention off the bat that none of these people are going to be the nominee for the Republican Party. Here's why. Because Donald Trump has his, you know, entire you know, arms wrapped around the Republican Party. Every Republican Party voter, um, not everyone, but a large chunk of the Republican Party voting base is still supporting Donald Trump. He has really, no matter, even though he's about to be arrested tomorrow in Fulton County, Georgia, as an inmate, someone who is going to be, you know, taking a mugshot of himself, he's still going to win the Republican nomination. He's going to defeat all of these Republicans who are deciding to run for president, some who are qualified to serve. But guess what? It doesn't matter because Donald Trump is um, really has his, has his say in the Republican Party. This is Ron DeSantis. He's the governor of Florida right here. Someone who a lot of people thought would do a really good job in this campaign for president, unfortunately for him, or maybe fortunately for us, Ron DeSantis has pretty much collapsed upon um, upon ascent, and he has not had the flair, he's not had the success on the campaign trail that a lot of people were expecting him to do. This is Tim Scott. He is a senator, U.S. senator from South Carolina. Tim Scott, who is running on an ultra-religious platform, um, I think he even mentions God in his campaign motto, which is definitely a bit unusual. He's running to be president, and unfortunately, he's pulling at about 2%, if that. So Tim Scott trying to make history, someone who has been a history maker himself as a U.S. senator from South Carolina, as an African-American senator from South Carolina, unfortunately for him, not going to make it through. This is Mike Pence. He's going to be on stage tonight as well. We all know who Mike Pence is. He's the former vice president of the United States and also someone who Donald Trump essentially hung out to dry. And I say hung because we all know that a lot of Donald Trump supporters were actually chanting for Do Mike Pence to be hung on January 6th, right? 2021, outside of the Capitol. Mike Pence is deciding to run against Donald Trump he doesn't have much support in the Republican Party because, once again, a lot of the Republican Party believes that Mike Pence should have overturned the election results of 2020. He didn't do that. He did follow the Constitution. Props to him, I guess. He's still someone who really doesn't have much of a spine, I would say. Mike Pence not going to go very far. We'll see what he does on the stage tonight at the debate. Once again, the first debate happening for the Republican Party presidential debate tonight, 9 o'clock 11, to 11, Eastern Time. But Mike Pence, uh, I don't think, has a future in politics, to be quite frank, especially as a Republican, because he's turned so much of the Republican Party away from him. Thanks for commenting, Priscilla. Look at, the, look at these characters. That's a great way to put it, right? I mean, what a cast. I definitely wouldn't want to watch that sitcom. Over here is Chris Christie, next candidate. Chris Christie is the former governor of New Jersey. He's a former prosecutor, someone who's very comfortable on a stage, very comfortable in the spotlight, and someone who enjoys a debate. I think if you're watching the debate tonight, you're going to be seeing and hearing a lot of Chris Christie because in past debates, he's been one to be known to interrupt, to interject, to be kind of a bulldog and a fighter on the debate stage. So I think Chris Christie is going to be very vocal tonight and is going to really be 
trying to make a name for himself, trying to interject those little one-liners that always go viral after debates. This is the guy who's going to be doing a lot of that tonight. Moving on over here, a guy you probably never saw before. Quite frankly, I didn't really see him before last week. Didn't know his name. His name is Doug Burgo, okay? And he is the, I think it's South Dakota governor, but I wouldn't bet on it because, once again, don't know much about him. But he's running, and he somehow was able to manage to get on the debate stage, and there's been a little bit of discussion about how he did that. Um, there were some accusations, or I don't know if they would be called accusations, but some candidates were actually offering gifts to people in order for them to donate to their campaign. Why would they do that? Because you needed to have 40,000 individual donors donate to your campaign in order to get on that debate stage. So for someone who doesn't have much name recognition, how in the world are you going to get that many people to donate to your campaign? Easy answer. You basically bribe them. And that's what Doug Burgum did right here, uh, giving out gifts and things like that to try to get that 40,000 individual donor count to hit. And now he's on the debate stage tonight. Last but not least, this is Vivek Ramaswamy. And this is someone who, quite frankly, you could argue is in second place in the Republican presidential primary behind only Donald Trump. A lot of people would say it's Ron DeSantis, but Ron DeSantis, he's been falling flat. And Vivek Ramaswamy has really been kind of skyrocketing in the polls. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, he's young, he's articulate, and he's very rich. And I think the last part probably matters more than any, right? Because if you're rich, if you have money, then you can go out and you can uh, spend, spend, spend. You can travel all around. You can market in a way that some of these other candidates just aren't able to because they don't have the resources. Multi-millionaire, I don't know, he might be a billionaire. Um, very rich, very well off in the tech or financial industry, I believe. So look for him tonight to, I think a lot of eyes are going to be on him because he's someone who's not very well known. He's becoming probably in the Republic, in Republican households to be, to be a household name, but people have never really seen him live. And tonight's going to be the first time where you see Vivek Ramaswamy live. And we'll see what kind of flair that he has. We'll see if he's articulate on stage, if he's as confident on stage up against some of these more, how do you say, experienced politicians, someone like a Chris Christie. I think tonight, probably more than, more than any, I'm interested to see if Chris Christie and Vivek Ramaswamy, if they end up battling between each other, if any words are thrown between each other. Because if you're Chris Christie, someone who's going to come out swinging and throwing a ton of shade and attacks at pretty much everyone, um, who are you going to go after the most? You're going to go after the ones who are above you in the polls. And right now above Chris Christie is Ron DeSantis and Vivek Ramaswamy. So expect Chris Christie to really be targeting these two in particular. And someone who is an experienced debater in Christie not an experienced debater in Ramaswamy. That's going to be a very interesting and very captivating um, storyline playing out here tonight. So another thing that's interesting is figuring out who's actually running for president and who's running for maybe vice president or who's running to be a cabinet member. And how are we going to figure out who is who, right? How are we going to decipher that tonight uh, if you're watching the debate? Well, you're going to be able to find that out by listening to see who is attacking Trump, who's defending Trump, um, and who's trying to stay as neutral as possible. Because remember, these people are all running to essentially be the runner-up in the Republican primary. They're not going to be the nominee. Donald Trump will be the nominee. Someone who is about to get arrested tomorrow night in Fulton County, Georgia. He's going to be the nominee for the Republican Party. Crazy, right? Four indictments, even you know, dozens, hundreds of different charges against him in many different courts across the country. But that's for another TikTok Live. Right now we're talking about the debate. Who's going to attack Trump? I can tell you right now, Chris Christie's gonna be a big attacker of Donald Trump. Mike Pence is going to be 
You never know with Mike Pence. This guy, like I said earlier, he doesn't have a spine. He doesn't have a, any sort of backbone. He, he won't, he doesn't take a position on just about anything because he's always trying to play to what's popular, right? For a very unpopular guy, kind of ironic. Mike Pence, will he attack Trump? How forceful will he be in attacking Trump? That's gonna be very interesting to watch. I think Christie and Pence attacking Trump a lot. Someone else who has been pretty outspoken against Trump, even though she served in the cabinet with him, is Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley definitely is, you know, she's young. She has a long future ahead of her if she wants it, if she can maintain it in Republican politics. But tonight's going to be very interesting because if she goes on the attack against Trump, she may be literally throwing her entire political future down the drain, right? So how forceful will she get against Donald Trump? And at the same time, at what point in this campaign will Nikki Haley actually decide, well, you know what? I have no chance at the presidency right now, but how can I boost my name recognition among the Republican Party and maybe kind of fall in line with the Donald Trump platform to possibly become a vice presidential candidate for him, right? So that's kind of interesting to see what will play out there. Will Nikki Haley tonight turn into that sort of, I want to be Donald Trump's running mate and I have a national platform to try and start that campaign on the stage? Will she do that? Not sure. I predict it will happen at some point. It might not be tonight. But in a future debate, I would say, certainly. Asa Hutchinson, this is a guy who's probably the most moderate of anybody on the stage. And he might just be the nicest guy on the stage. He has really tried to bring that old school Republican Party sort of values, if, if it even exists anymore. God bless, his, God bless his heart because I don't think it exists anymore in the Republican Party. He's trying to bring it back. And I don't think he's going to make many waves tonight. I don't think he's going to increase his standing in the polls. I, I think people probably will see him as someone who um, you know, could be a candidate for the sane Republican Party members. Unfortunately, there really aren't many left. So that's probably why he will finish with 1% to 2% of the vote when it's all said and done. Ron DeSantis. You know, something that's interesting about Ron is that he is usually confident when he's speaking on his own to people who he's comfortable speaking with, aka people who he knows like him, people in Florida, Republicans in Florida. But Ron DeSantis is not that great of a debater. If you've ever seen him debate, you know, you can look it up on YouTube. He's, he hasn't debated much. He's not very experienced in debates. He was a former federal prosecutor, so... I guess that could go to his advantage, but in terms of political debates, Ron DeSantis has never been that great. He debated last year for the governorship, four years ago for the governorship, and maybe some times whenever he was running for the U.S. House, but for the most part, DeSantis is not a comfortable debater. He's not someone who I would say is, um, I think there's a lot of high expectations for DeSantis tonight because he technically is running as the um, as the leader of this pack, right? But if you throw Trump in here, Trump is leading them all by about 40 points. But DeSantis is, is going to be in the middle of the stage tonight. And there's going to be a lot of expectations. And people who, if you've seen him, if you've listened to him, then you expect that he'll probably be a great debater. He'll probably be a big, a bulldog, fight, 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 and really getting a lot of good jabs in. I don't think that's what you're going to see tonight, in my personal opinion. I think DeSantis... Um, he's going to probably have a tough time. Number one, a lot of people are going to be targeting him as the leader of this pack. Number two, I don't think he's a great debater, and I think he's going. it's going to show. And listen, there's been a lot of successful politicians who haven't been great debaters. Barack Obama. You might think, Mike, this guy is like the greatest orator of all time. He, he's the greatest speaker. Great speaking does not equal great debating. Barack Obama hated debates. There's a, a lot of studies and a lot of um, you know, former comments and interviews that, that Obama has given, I think, after leaving office that, where he said, I don't like debating. I just don't enjoy it. I don't, en I don't think it's effective. I don't think it's a valuable tool for people to learn about the candidates. And whether you agree with him or not, I think it is kind of interesting how people who are great speakers, people who 
captivate audiences, they don't, that doesn't always translate into debates. So I don't think, I think DeSantis will struggle tonight. I think it will be a big turning point in the campaign. He's already been sinking for the most part. I don't think, I think he's going to sink even more tonight. DeSantis is going to be pretty rough. T Tim Scott, on the contrary, I think Tim Scott will probably have a good performance tonight. He is pretty good on a stage for someone who really has no, um, you know, no entertainment background like some other people who have in the past, a.k.a. Donald Trump. Tim Scott used to sell insurance before he entered politics. But for a guy who doesn't have that much experience being on a stage, being rah, 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 he's a pretty good speaker. And I think he is, um, I think he will probably do well tonight. Sorry about that. I think Tim Scott's going to do well tonight on the debate stage, 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mike Pence. Mike Pence, I don't think he has a future in politics. I said that earlier, and I'll say it again. Um, I don't think he's a good speaker. I don't think he's a... You know, he, the guy I, he actually used to host a radio show back in Indiana in the 90s, and, and it doesn't really mean anything because he is... He doesn't have this gravitas that I think a lot of politicians usually have, or at least people, politicians who want to run for president have. And a debate stage, not very good. Does anyone else remember that debate that Mike Pence had with Kamala Harris in 2020? Remember that when that fly landed on his, on his head? And that was like the literally most exciting aspect of Mike Pence that night because he's so dry to listen to. The guy is very, very dry to listen to. Michelle remembers. Wasn't that, that was hilarious. Um, but Mike Pence, he's, he's really hard to listen to. He's, he's very, um, very plain spoken. He always does this weird thing where, you know, he makes it look like he's really, really into what he's saying. And he is kind of robotic like this. Um, uh, that's Mike Pence. And it's, it's, it's pretty cringeworthy to watch. So expect cringe tonight if you're watching out of Mike Pence. Chris Christie. What do I think is going to happen with Chris Christie? I think exactly what many people are expecting. I think Chris Christie is going to come out firing shots left and right. And you really don't need a huge fundraising machine in order to make an impact. Uh, A.K.A. Pete Buttigieg in 2020. Remember in Iowa when he did really, really well without a lot of name recognition or a lot of national star power. You can you can do that. And that's the great part about the presidential process in the U.S. There's a lot of things wrong with it, by the way. But one cool thing is that you have all these small states that go first. So if you're a no-namer, if you don't have much resources, you can do well. And you can actually rise to the top pretty quickly. And I think of Bill Clinton, right, back in the 1990s, the 1992 election, whenever he first won, when he, not many people knew who he was, just some, you know, it's a governor from Arkansas, and he shot up very quickly because of some early wins in those small states. So it's pretty easy to do. Anyways, Chris Christie, I think he could do pretty well in those small states. I think he's pretty captivating. However, he's not going to beat Donald Trump. So he is really just running and trying to get that anti-Trump vote and there's not a lot out there, to be quite frank. He's going to be a bulldog tonight on stage. He's going to be pretty strong. I think he's going to throw a lot of shots at a lot of people, namely Ron DeSantis, namely Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, he's probably going to... Uh, let's see. He's probably going to... I, I wouldn't say win the debate. I mean, he could win the debate. You know, if we're going to talk about who's going to be the winner of the debate... I probably do lean towards Chris Christie, just based off of what I know about how these people perform on a debate stage and their political prowess. That's a guy to watch for. I'm actually pretty excited to hear him tonight, and I'm pretty excited to hear him go after Donald Trump. He's not going to hold it back. He's going to make it all about Trump. He's going to pound him as, as uh, forcefully as he can. And he's going to talk a lot about the fact that tomorrow in Fulton County, Georgia, Donald J. Trump is going to be arrested on extremely serious charges, um, you know, criminal, criminal conspiracy charges. These, this is not something that's going to be taken lightly. It carries significant jail time. And Chris Christie's going to make sure everybody knows that. 
I don't think he's going to necessarily go after Trump's politics or agenda because everyone kind of runs on the same thing, right? When you're from the same political party, what he's going to be going after is the Donald Trump as the person, Donald Trump as the inmate, as the alleged criminal who's going to be arrested tomorrow in Georgia, the leader of the Republican Party. The one who's going to be the nominee for the Republican Party is going to be literally arrested tomorrow. He's reporting to a jail in less than 24 hours. Is that the person you want leading your party? Is that the person who Republicans really think is going to help them win a general election? Come on. Don't fool yourselves, right? Anyways, Doug Burgum, I don't have much to say about him because... Once again, who knows who Doug Burgum is? Not many people. He got on the debate stage by get, giving out gifts to people uh, who would donate a dollar to his campaign just so he could hit the 40,000 individual donor mark. That was a requirement to get on the debate stage. That's why this guy who not many people know who he is, that's how he got on stage. Props to him for getting creative, if that's what you want to call it. But I am not sure what he could do tonight to make himself a household name in the Republican Party. When you have eight people on a stage, two hours, you're not gonna get that much time to break through. Uh, if you have some one-liners and some jabs, maybe it will help. But for the most part, this Doug Burnham, I'm not sure. Um, I don't really know what he, what's gonna happen with him tonight, I can assure you. And Vivek Ramaswamy, I think, will be a very entertained figure in this entire thing tonight on the debate stage. Um, I I don't know. I mean, he's either going to sink or he's going to swim. He's he's done pretty well on the media channels when he interviews and conversations, which leads me to think that he might do pretty well on a debate stage. It's just that under the bright lights, when you're on stage with a, a lot of qualified and experienced politicians, um, you know, either you have it or you don't. Donald Trump, he he did he did have it. Um when he first took stage, that much entertainment experience, I don't think he has that much. Swami's gonna be my wild card. I think he's someone who could either do really super well or really super bad. And um, so I'm, I'm interested to see. How, um, I don't think he will, will, will flop too much because what, what does this guy have that others don't? He's not a politician, so he really doesn't have much to lose. He can go out there and fire as many you know, in a cabinet or whatever. He's already loaded, so. He can really do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and it's not going to make much of a difference. So I think he's going to do pretty well. Wild card right here. Be the winner, my projected winner tonight. I think someone who's going to lose the debate, someone who I don't think is going to do very well whatsoever. Ron, De sorry, Ron DeSantis. He's going to be the big loser of the debate. In my prediction, I think he, you know, he's not a good debater. He has a lot. Go he, his campaign's failing very fast. He has a lot of baggage when it comes to kind of the crazy and weird radical things that he's been trying to push in Florida. You know, the book banning and, the, you know, very anti-LGBT rhetoric. He's going to get called out for it tonight. Somebody should call him out for it tonight, I should say. And I think we're going to see him squirm a lot. And by the way, if you're going to watch 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock, look at his chin if they do close-ups. A report came out yesterday saying that someone studied all of his debate styles and, and preparation and he grits his teeth he, he really grits his teeth like this when he's really angry when people are attacking him watch Ron DeSantis tonight see if you can spot that and um, it's very easy to see that he's getting aggravated and I think he's kind of a loose cannon to be quite frank so you can see some really interesting moments tonight out of him if he decides to blow up so uh, my pre predicted winner, my predicted loser, a wild card who, quite frankly, could be a winner, could be the loser. Um, you know, who do I think is going to have, you know, the most cringeworthy moments? Probably Tim Scott or Nikki Haley. I think these are two people who want to be seen, like, they really want to be well-liked. They really want to be, um, you know, kind of you know, above 1% in the polls, I guess. Tim Scott and Nikki Haley, so they're probably going to be saying a lot of weird things. Uh, Tim Scott's going to get 
like overly religious. Just just wait for that. I bet you in his opening statement, if they let them give them, he's going to be really overly religious, and it's going to make people uncomfortable. Not for the religion, but because of the way he's going to say it. Just just watch for that. Probably the most cringeworthy moment. Nikki Haley too. She might, you know, be a little awkward trying to toe the line between do I like Trump? Or do I not like Trump? Do I attack him? Do I not attack him? So that could lead to some kind of awkward moments there, especially if someone like Chris Christie decides that he's going to attack her. And and, and what's going to be interesting is this guy right here, Chris Christie, he's going to be pushing all these candidates to say, are you with Trump or are you against Trump? Will you? I hope this question gets asked very early on. I want the moderators to say, at this time, please raise your hand if you will pardon Donald Trump for all of his crimes when you take office, if you take office on day one. See who raises their hands out of this group. It will be extremely telling. And those people are going to be attacked ruthlessly by Chris Christie. But it's going to be... It's going to be must-see TV. Who do I think would raise their hands uh, and basically sell their soul to try to get votes from Trump supporters? I think mm, Vivek Ramaswamy would probably raise his hand. I think Ron DeSantis might raise his hand. Tim Scott might raise his hand because these are people who really want to be, um, you know, they really want to be liked among the Trump supporters. We do have some comments in here. Jesse96. I'm going to pin this comment because I think it's so true. The only winner is Biden. Amen, Jesse. 100% true. All these people are going to go on stage tonight and make fools of themselves. Um, but at the same time, someone like Chris Christie might go and they, he might attack Trump so hard. And, he's, and a lot of independents are going to be watching this, right? They're going to be... Um, you know, center people, people on the right, they're going to be watching this. And any attack against Trump is going to be essentially an argument and a win for Joe Biden. Great comment, Jesse. Um, let's see here. You know, Miami Maniac 74, will you be showing it live? I would show it live. However, I think that it would probably get thrown out because of, um, you know, copyright violations and arc of justice you know, we just finally were able to go live, so I don't want to jeopardize being able to, to go live. But you can watch it on Fox News. I know it's hard to say that, but if you have cable, uh, you could probably also find it somewhere, um, maybe listening to it on YouTube, or if you search on Twitter, now known as X, I'm sure there will be a link out there someone will share to find, um, to find it. Um, Jabroni put, Christie's a DB. No, I don't really want to assume anything about what DB means. Oh, I, I think I know, though. Um, yeah, Jabroni, you're, you're right about that. Although I, I would be interested to see, can he use that? And um, can he use that to the advantage of Joe Biden by attacking Trump and making sure that more independents and swing voters become Joe Biden voters next year? Um, so we're about ready to get underway, folks. Eight, nine o'clock is the start time. Hopefully you tune in if you want to. If not, you'll find a lot of information about what happened later on. I'm Jordan Roan with Arc of Justice PA. Please give a follow to our page on, um, here on TikTok. We want as many as we can. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Trying to create content, especially as we wrap up to 2024, because it's a personal mission of mine. Um, and a lot of volunteers who I've worked with over the past couple years to make sure that uh, we win. Democrats win across Pennsylvania, but this is broader than that. This is across the entire country, the entire U.S. We want strong um, Democratic leadership, and it starts in the White House, and we're going to make sure Joe Biden wins in 2024, and no Republican ever gets back in the White House again. Wouldn't that be nice? But more than that, the U.S. Senate, the U.S. House, state legislators, we have so much at stake across the entire country. And so many offices that you never even heard of before. We need to win those too. And we're here to do just that. Jesse956, I agree here in Texas. Texas, someday, someday, Jesse, Texas is going to get over that hump. And Texas is going to go blue. Not sure when that will be, but it will be at some point. Um, Matt says, Vivek24, hey, respect. I think I'm really interested to see Vivek tonight. I think... I said earlier, he's, he's my wild card. I think he has a chance to 
to do pretty well. Nori, can you rebroadcast the debate? We'll see. I think that actually could be a good idea to maybe um, at least go through some some of the big key highlights of the debate and maybe you know discuss those after it gets broadcast at some point tomorrow or, or later down the line. Give a follow to the page and you'll be updated and notified when we go live. Turn on notifications and you'll be able to see that. Holly, when's it start? 9 o'clock p.m. 9 p.m. is the start time. 9 to 11. Nori, I don't have cable. Well, I think that, you know, you probably can find something on Insta- on Twitter. I think check Twitter. Search for, you know, Republican Debate Live. There's probably going to be a link there somewhere. Someone will post. I think you'll be able to. Scotty knows Prez of the Mercer County PA Young Dems here. I'm going to follow you, Scotty. Thank you so much. We should definitely connect. Um, I'm here in Montgomery. So always looking to connect Mercer, Dems. You got a lot of uh, a lot of good work there, and uh, we all have a lot of work that we can continue to do to make sure that every county in, in PA, no matter if you're a red county or a blue county, just lower that percentage of Republican win, uh, lower that Republican win percentage. Coming from a central Pennsylvania county, I know what it's like to um, to be red, and I know um, that it's hard to have motivation and encouragement to get out the vote. But it's in the rural counties, it's in the red counties where Joe Biden has won, right? It's the red counties that helped John Fetterman win the U.S. Senate, and it's what's going to help. Bob Casey win the Senate next year because we need to shed the red. Lower the red percentage of victory in those red counties and you get uh, Joe Biden, the Democrats, over the hump. Jesse, thanks so much for this share. That's awesome. Um, Scotty, God bless Philly. And, yeah, God bless Philly and Pittsburgh, right? You know, And I 100% agree. Um, you know, If it wasn't for the, the blue tsunamis in those, those two parts of the state, we would be in big trouble, but like I said, it's also the the red counties who have strong, orga- you know, small but mighty organizing games, and we need to push. We need to push the DNC, the PA Dems. They need to provide the resources on the ground to to rural counties. Twenty twenty was huge. It, uh, they did so much more in 2020 than in 2016 in the rural counties, providing resources and funding, and it showed, and we did really well. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Three minutes, two minutes away from the debate. They're on stage doing the national anthem right now. I don't know. Tune in if you want. We'll cover it all at Arc of Justice. Give us a follow. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Shout out to Hey, it's Dome. May. Hey, could not agree more. Scotty, thank you for all your hard work. Let's connect, Scotty. Uh, reach out and DM, and hopefully we can, um, you know, start something together and collaborate. Have a good night. Take care, everyone. And vote blue.